you know, our lives have changed a lot, obviously, since we started. We were, we were a couple, and then we got married, and then we divorced, and, you know, so we've been split up for several years now, and, uh, you know, obviously that's changed things a lot, but I think essentially our relationship to each other is pretty similar to what it, what it was. Uh, we had the same kind of bond. Um, you know, there's a level of intimacy in our playing and the way we communicate together that is, uh, you know, I mean, I, it's, I think it's pretty unique in a way. Um, I definitely feel like when I'm playing with Christina that we communicate when I don't even think I'm communicating. Like, for instance, tonight uh, there were a couple moments when the sound just kind of suddenly would stop and I noticed both of us would be stopping at the same time. You know, I think it's just we're so in tune with kind of where we know the other person is going to go that uh, it's really easy for us to just kind of change directions on a dime like that. I think, you know, I mean, I think the most obvious uh, transformations have been in the lineups. I mean, we've added a third member 
twice. Actually, we've yeah we've we've had three different trio configurations over the years. So you know that's I guess the most obvious difference. But really, I always have thought of us as a duo project with a third person occasionally there. Um, I mean, you know, essentially, even if the band were to function as a democracy, I mean, you know, Christina and I still would be able to trump any third person just by our, you know, two votes to one. So, essentially, it's always been a duo. Um, you know, we allow the third person to kind of contribute what they will. And, you know, when Heather was in the band, we, we changed the sound an awful lot. And, uh, you know, I think that, that kind of opened up the sound a lot more. And, uh, you know, I... I think up until Heather joined, we were really concerned with songs, for one thing, um, and uh, just making a big live sound as much as possible. Uh, that's always been the reason we've added a third person, is to thicken the live sound a little bit. And I think really, when Heather joined, that kind of, that made, that opened things up to the point and kind of took it to this really extreme level, kind of improvisationally and just in, in terms of intensity. And, you know, it taught us a lot about how to play like that. And then when Heather left, you know, that sort of was the path we were on, is trying to create this big sound that sort of filled things up and was really high energy. And uh, because before, you know, we always struggled with being a quiet band. And, you know, uh, you know, at times we've been a pop band, sort of a psych band or whatever, but, you know, with Heather it was more like this kind of uncontrollable beast, and I think that's what we've really been shooting for in recent years uh, as a duo. Um, and, you know, we've, we've evolved a lot in the way that we play our instruments, obviously. Uh, we kind of went from a tendency to have a lot of effects and a lot of processing to the sound to kind of st well, live anyway to kind of stripping things down um, you know we play with very few very few effects now and you know any kind of any kind of sounds we generate we want to be able to generate just out of our hands and our strings um, and whatever effects I use tend to be tone altering effects rather than delay CDR thing has totally kind of changed the face of you know the underground in a way. I mean, people went from cassettes to CDs. Obviously, you know, cassettes are back again, I guess. But you know, um, yeah. I mean, it really took it, you know that in com in combination with the internet really made things a lot different. Like now, you can make a hundred CDs 
on your computer and sell them by emailing people, which you couldn't really do when we first started. You know, when we first were pressing up CDs, we had to you had to get them pressed and you had to find a distributor to take them. If you did mail order, you did it by putting ads in fanzines and that kind of thing. So it's you know, it's, the internet kind of completely revolutionized that, I think. Um, as far as the business of like distribution of mass-produced CDs, I don't really know how much has changed. I mean, I know a lot of distributors have come and gone since we were working with them, but uh, honestly, I, I've been kind of apart from that, so I don't really know. You know. That's one of the reasons that we went to Cranky is because we didn't really feel like we were kind of up enough on the state of things to do that anymore. But. I don't know people always think we're a quiet band and we're mysterious or whatever i think we're pretty direct i think we're pretty you know i mean we've gotten like pretty aggressive I and mean, we, we kind of want to throw things in people's face a little bit in that respect so i don't really you know the whole quiet thing is kind of a misconception uh, and you know i guess i guess anybody who listens to one of our cds without hearing another one is going to be really confused when they buy something else and it's totally different you know so, I mean, it's all us, you know. <laughs> so I don't, but I, so I don't know how to what to tell those people. But you know. well, we never really have been in the habit of. I mean, I don't think mailing things back and forth really work for us because the structure of the song kind of evol evolves with the way we play together. Like the songs will tend to be real simple with one or two chords, maybe three chords sometimes if we're really stretching, but uh, you know, even within that framework, um, things are generally very elastic and you know, if we don't, we don't have the other person there to kind of push it along in one way or in one direction or the other, it just doesn't work as well. Um, so what we've, what we've done is the last record was recorded when she flew out to Oakland and this next record we're gonna do with me here so you know I think it's just a question of us getting together for setting aside a couple weeks to record and not tour and you know not worry about playing <sighs> Still. Uh, so yeah I mean it's it's definitely a challenge but I think it's good for us in a way because we have a limited amount of time we can work together so it really focuses us um, Whereas before when we were living together, it was kind of like, you know, put it off and put it off. And, you know, things would kind of drag on sometimes. So.
Well, it's interesting as I've kind of felt tonight like it was a lot like playing in Europe, which is where, you know, the crowds are a lot bigger and uh, people are a little more, a little more attentive. Sound systems are obviously was obviously well for us. It was a lot better. I mean, the small stage, the sound system is kind of more similar to the club sound system. Uh, but we got we got involved. I guess Phil. I mean, Phil knew about my music when I was in a band called the Mike Gun a long, long time ago, and he interviewed us for Terras, uh, the Ptolemaic Terrascope, and. Hence, he was familiar when familiar with us already when we started recording as Charles Lombardis. And uh, my my memory is this is kind of fuzzy, so I'm not sure it exactly happened like this. But I, I remember we I think I'm pretty sure he invited us to one of the earlier ones, probably the San Francisco one, um, and we turned it down uh, because we at that point were pl- either weren't playing live or just couldn't do it because of work or whatever and. So we went, you know, the years went along, and we started playing live again, and, you know, we found out there was the Terra Stock happening in Seattle, and we had been playing live for a little while at that point, and so I actually, I just wrote Phil and asked him if we, you know, if he was still interested in having us play at Terra Stock, and he was, so we played that one, and we have been invited to the two, you know, basically, it's, you know, once you get invited to one, you know, you're, <laughs> you, most of the time, you're invited back to all the others. So, you know. um, so yeah, we uh, we then did the Boston one, and then this one. Um. somewhere like around 2002 2003 we both really started recording our own stuff and kind of gradually as uh, you know as we as we were breaking up our relationship we were getting a little more independent in that way and uh, the last year I was in Austin I was you know I first started doing solo tours and things like that and uh, yeah I, I kind of I came to a decision pretty early on that I would play with almost anybody who asked me to and it was kind of an intuitive thing. Like if I got good vibes from a person, I would do it. Or if the person was persistent enough to like actually get me to come and play with them, you know, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, it usually doesn't happen again. If it does work, then you know, records come out. And so yeah, I mean, I've I've been doing a lot. Um, I'd kind of like to do a little more solo stuff than I'm doing. Um, Sitting down and recording a solo CD is not always the easiest thing for me. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier to kind of go into a project with someone else with no expectations as to what's going to happen and just kind of you know feel it out. Um, I guess my main collaborator recently has been Robert Horton, who's like a Bay Area sound artist. Um, he's been in bands since the punk era, the original punk era, and you know he was really. He's, he's very organized and very uh, meticulous about the way he goes about recording stuff. And that's just been really, that works really well with the way I record. And, you know, we've just done a lot of stuff together. And, you know, I really like the results he gets too. You know, we'll go and record something and, you know, Robert takes it and does his thing to it. And uh, it comes out something, it comes out as a totally different animal at the end. And, uh, but, you know, his instincts are really good and he's very critical and, uh, I think that's, that's that's also been good about getting me into contact with other people too, you know. But you know, I think I think going to the Bay Area uh, really kind of 
obviously bumped that up a notch just because you know, I have to do something with my time. So yeah, I got I got a lot of other projects on one line. Uh, Badger Lore, that's another one. That's with Ben Chasney and uh, Glenn Donaldson sometimes is involved from uh, Jewel Antler. Peter Swanson from the Yellow Swans and Rob Fisk from he used to be in Deerhoof and who's now in Seven Year Rabbit Cycle. I, mean, I work with those guys. That's usually a very kind of infrequent sort of a formal thing that either happens or doesn't. You know, we'll get together and record. And uh, you know, our, our, our playing time together is usually very brief. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we've, we've somehow managed to create some sort of discography with it you know, so oh. well that's yeah that covers it